What's up, Unleashed Omaha fans? Uh, this is Jamie again. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot my tripod and my GoPro at home, so I am <laughs> using my camera phone and I'm using uh, my vehicle. And I've actually got my phone propped in between my window and the top of it, so I apologize about that. So today I'm going to go through uh, teaching place. So place is used for a variety of reasons. Variety. Of, I don't care if the dog sits, stands, downs. I don't really care whatever it is, right? I simply want the dog not to leave the space. That's it. That's your only assignment. Your only assignment is climb up on this object and do not come off of it. Okay? So in order to teach that, I need to teach it on multiple surfaces. Par I mean, you can make place whatever you want. Park benches, rocks, balls, buckets, hampers, their beds. Uh, I use place for like where my dogs are supposed to be when they're in the car. Um, so they're not walking all around and they're not doing whatever the heck they want to. So, the beginning of this work you want to make this as easy as possible. So now these items behind me are, are a little bit challenging, um, but Duchess has been doing this for a little while. Uh, Duchess came to us with uh, some really bad fear aggression towards other dogs and just didn't really know how to handle situations and she's doing fantastic now. Very confident. Um, still a little skittish, but building confidence day by day, which is just awesome to see. So the way we build confidence in our dogs is we we help them through situations. We help them through, you know, working through different situations, climbing up on stuff, getting down, climbing up, getting down. Just simply follow me. Follow me. That's all I care. I don't care if, you know, if you're not all the way there yet. You know, like some dogs, they're not going to look the greatest when they first start training. Some dogs are scared out of their minds. They're not super happy dogs in the beginning of this because they don't freaking know. I mean, so you have to build that level of confidence until the dog starts to understand you're there to help. You're there to help them. You're there to show them what what to do and how to get through things, how to manage stress. You're going to advocate for them. You're going to be their protector and that they're not going to have to worry about situations anymore because you're going to work them through. And if your dog has a specific behavioral issue that they don't know how to handle then we need to take that responsibility but today is about place so I got four different objects back here I've got a, a basket kind of a storage bin a bucket and a cooler so I'm simply just gonna work Duchess here through all four she's gonna jump up the moment she jumps up I'm gonna tell her yes she's free to come down and get her reward of food Duchess is simply working for her daily food Nothing special. No, I mean, you don't have to go out and spend a bunch of money on special treats. If your dog isn't food driven, then take their food bowl away and either throw it away or put it in the closet for at least two months. Two months I want that thing in there. Don't feed out of your bowl. Take your time. Go out. Train, train, train. Okay? So, in the beginning, we give light pressure and we show the dog that the pressure is relieved the moment they get up on the object. So in the beginning, a lot of times the dogs will walk around it, dogs won't be comfortable getting up on it, dogs don't know what the heck they're doing, so you gotta work them through it. But even one paw up on an object in the beginning is progress. They're moving towards So one paw is rewardable, and then as they get more and more uh, understanding of the work, then we, then we ask for more from the dog. So. I'm just going to kind of show you a little bit of place work with uh, Duchess here. She's an Australian Shepherd, great dog, came a long way in a few months, and uh, this is place, everybody. All right, Duchess, you ready? Okay. So I walk over the object, and what I do is I give slight leash pressure to the object. Once she gets on, the pressure goes away. I mark it yes, she comes off, and I give her a little bit of food, okay? I simply just come back, 
and I repeat this. She gets up, yes. She can get right back off as soon as she got on, okay? Yes. Good. Pressure towards the object? Yes. Okay. Now as you progress in this work, you'll see the dog do exactly what Duchess just did. Okay? I didn't even give her pressure, but because we've done this enough, she understands that getting up on an object gets her her reward. So when we, we start this work, we classically condition it. We make it an involuntary action because we are pressuring them to the position. Now as this work progresses, you'll see the dog start to understand because of the marker training, and I'm kind of using that operant conditioning, yes. Now the dog starts to voluntarily go up to that position, yes, because they know that, like with Pavlov's dogs, they know that the bell ringing means food. Well, in our instance, the bell ringing is the word yes. So once the dog starts to understand that they can control the food coming out, now you have what's called an active dog. So she is actively going to the spot because she knows it derives the food. It produces the reward. Now I have a dog that's doing this stuff on her own, and I'm not even telling her to go to the spot. Then I can start to name it. Yes. So once I have classically conditioned this, getting up, yes, coming off. Getting up, yes, coming off. And I start to see that the dog starts to voluntarily go up there. Now I'm ready to name it. Now I will name this command. I'll say, when she's up there, I'll say, place, yes. Good. So she starts to link. When I say, place, yes. Where is she at, and what did she hear when I say, place? She knows that she was right here. I said the word place, she was here, and then she got the reward marker. So she starts to put the two and two together. She goes, oh, every time he says the word place, and I jump up on this object, I get my marker word, yes. And then you can start place, yes. And we repeat that until we have it to where the dog is going up there 90% of the time. Just nailing it. Nailing it. And then, like, this isn't the only object. We can come over here. Okay. Come on. And now we have something that's a little higher. A little, like, so she wants to go back to this object. That's no longer the source of reward anymore. So that we're going to come over here. That's just. Come on. So this is a little different. Yes. She jumps up there. Come off. And get a reward. She jumps up, yes, she can come off, reward. She comes up, yes, she can come off, reward. And sometimes I'll make these services a little unstable. I'll work the dog through it. I'll work the dog going to the place, yes. She comes off, gets her reward. Now, yes is a terminal marker. She no longer has to hold her position on place anymore. I'm not asking her to continue doing that. But until she hears the word yes, she has to stay up there. Now in the beginning of this work, only a second. The dog just has to get up there. You mark it yes, the dog can get down. Dog gets up, dog gets down. Dog gets up, dog gets down. And then the dog figures out, I have to wait until I hear the word yes to get my reward. Yes. Ah. Okay. So for some dogs, that object moving would really kind of freak them out. So you need to make sure that we're kind of taking the proper steps. Good. So she got up. She got down too a little quick, so I'm going to try it again. Nope. Nope. As you can see, she's having a little trouble with this one. Still wanting to go back to the old one. Glad you're getting to see this. So 
I'm simply working her through. Now, if I was doing it in the beginning, I would just mark those two feet up on. Yes. So in the beginning, I can just mark the two paws up on the object. I just want to make the object valuable. Great, this is great. This is exactly what I want you to see. And she's been up on these objects before, so I know that she can do this. And I try to do my best to stabilize them once they're up there. Let's get a good rep in with the cooler. Good. Yes. So if my dog has a little bit of struggle and she's not getting it, then we'll typically go back to one that she can do easily. Place. Yes. So that I can reward her and she doesn't really overly stress out. I'm just looking to make this fun for my dogs. I don't care. If I have a challenging object like Dakota, we put up him up on fire hydrants. Place. put up Dakota on fire hydrants that's a tough object that's a really tough object you've got this dome you've got a tight little surrounding and it's a really tough object to balance on but how I start to train that if you want to train your dog to jump up on fire hydrants the way that you do that is you start with a bucket you train your dog to get up on a bucket you tell them place, they get up on a bucket, you mark it. Up on a bucket, mark it. Up on a bucket, mark it. You reward that until that dog is up and down on that bucket. No problem. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, up and down on the bucket, and they have to sit to get the reward. Up and down on the bucket. Up on the bucket, they got to sit. Reward, off the bucket. Up on the bucket, sit. Off the bucket. Once I have that really nice and the dog is like, oh, got this. All I got to do is jump on the bucket and take a seat. And I get my reward. And you have that dog voluntarily just boom, 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 over and over and over again. Now I take a coffee cup, like a nice rounded coffee cup, and I set it in the middle of the bucket. And I do the same thing. I create conflict. Now it's not the same surface as it was. It's not a flat surface. My dog jumps up on the bucket. They've got the cup in the middle. My dog goes to sit. If they sit on top of the cup, I mark it. I offer my dog to get down. I give them food. I repeat this step until sitting on the coffee cup is easy. Once they have the coffee cup down, then I'll put a small bowl on top of the bucket. And I'll repeat that step until my dog is extremely comfortable sitting on the bowl. And then I'll upgrade even larger to a medium bowl. I'll repeat that process until my dog is comfortable. And then finally, the final step in teaching your dog how to get up on top of a fire hydrant is you put a bowl that is big enough so that there's only about one and a half to two inches of that bucket rim left. And the dog learns to get up, to balance on the bucket, to put their keister on top of the bowl, and you mark and reward that. And then you go out and you try that with a fire hydrant and you repeat the process. So. So we're doing a little bit of... So when you start doing duration work, like I'm starting with Duchess, we're starting to make her wait longer periods of time for her to derive a reward. If she gets off before we allow her to get off, we just simply tell her nope, N-O-P-E, because nope is really hard to say to mad. No is very easy to say the word mad so nope the dog doesn't get a reward we try again the dog gets back on we mark it yes and we repeat the process we slowly extend it out to where now you have to wait for five seconds 10 20 30 a minute two minutes five minutes eventually I'll have someone 
as a helper come out and try to coerce my dog off of the off of the spot. The dog gets off the spot, it's not a huge deal, it's a new exercise. We simply just put the, we tell the dog nope, the dog gets back on, the person tries to coerce them off by calling them. If they get off, we tell them nope. And then once the person comes up and tries to coerce my dog off and the dog stops listening to that person, I mark it yes and I give my dog food and I repeat that process. Eventually I put a long line on them and then once I have them on a long line I start putting more distance between me and the dog and I really try to get that person to call my dog off that spot. Once the dog is like, oh no problem, ignore this person. Then I'm going to add conflict again. Now I'm going to give that person a squeaker toy. I'm going to give them the tennis ball. I'm going to give them food. I'm going to give them whatever my dog is cracked out about. My, maybe my dog's favorite toy in the world. I'm going to give that stranger that toy and try to really get them off that spot. If my dog comes off the spot, it's not a big deal. You don't punish the dog. You simply redo it. And you redo it and you redo it and you redo it until the dog gives you the answer that you want. The dog doesn't come off for anything, for toys, for food, for nothing. Eventually, you can even have a second leash to where the dog, the person tries to come up and pull your dog off the spot. You give that dog pressure, more than likely that dog is going to get off the spot the first few times you do that. You mark it nope when they follow the person and you put them back on the spot. You set it up again, you give a little leash pressure from the stranger. If they get off, you tell them nope, put them back on. Eventually that dog learns that even if this person is giving me leash pressure, I don't go with them. And you'll see the dog to literally start to anchor down on that spot and not move even if that person is trying to pull them off of place. I do the same thing when I'm, I'm close to the dog. I'm trying to have that person pull my dog off the spot and then eventually I put a long line and then I start going further and further away from the dog. I repeat the exercise. Eventually I'll go around the corner of a building with a long line and I'll have that person try to pull my dog off. If my dog gets off, I simply tell him no. I come back in sight, put him back on place, repeat the process until my dog, even if I'm out of sight, does not get off the spot. Then I bring in my electronics, electric collar. I'll actually get out of sight. I no longer have a long leash on the dog. And I have that person go up and try to get my dog off that spot as hard as they freaking can. I try to get them to pull them off that spot. I try to get them to squeak her toy off that spot, food off that spot. I, I want that dog understanding I don't give a crap what that person tries to do to get you off. Even if they try to pull you off that spot, you don't leave that spot. And after I layer over my electronics on that, and my dog understands, if you get off the spot, now I start tapping on the collar. You get back on the spot, the collar tapping stops. I repeat that process while I'm in sight, longer line out of sight. Once that dog understands the electronics never happens, never comes to them as long as they maintain the position, whether I'm in sight or out of sight. I've practiced multiple repetitions. I've had a lot of success with my dog and they have not moved from that spot no matter what. Then I bring in punishment. You leave that spot, you're getting punished. Bam! On the collar. Do not leave that spot. It's not an option anymore. You've, tr you've practiced hundreds and hundreds of repetitions under multiple, multiple circumstances. You should understand that I don't care what the circumstance is. If I tell you place, you don't leave the spot. That's it. That's what we call proofing the exercise. Once you have your dog proofed out of sight, even with the strangers coming up to take your dog off the spot, you can tell your dog place and take it out as long as you want. 5, 10, 20, half hour, hour. If you really want to get stupidly extreme about it, you can go 
as long as you want. But, you know, how long are you really going to want your dog to stay in place with multiple distractions? I mean, let's be a little bit, let's be a little bit serious. You're not going to leave your dog out on a spot for five hours and expect them not to move from that spot. But that's the goal, is to get that dog, no matter what, not moving from the spot. Once you have it proofed, then you just take it multiple areas, multiple different spots, practice a little bit of the same stuff in different locations, and then you can go anywhere with your dog and place them on an object, and your dog will be like a freaking statue. No matter what the circumstances, they will not move from that spot. Boom. You've got the, one of the most amazing commands and a very, very useful one for you and your dog. So I hope a lot of this made sense. If you guys have any questions or anything on the video, you can email me, jamie, J-A-I-M-E, at unleashedomaha.com, or you can uh, private message me on the Unleashed Omaha app, or you can dial me direct at 402-965-1114. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'm loving this video taping. I really am. I'm, I, I tell you what, I can't wait to be able to do this all the time, every day, 10 hours a day, and make as many videos for you guys and get you guys the most solid, rock solid relationships, confident, powerful, understanding dogs. It's just so amazing to see these guys work to see how far they've come and to see their level of understanding so um, you guys have a wonderful day love you all and uh, like I said if you got any questions just hit me up see you guys